Hello and welcome back to the Coders Legacy channel. In today's video, we're going to explore how to follow links in Scrapey. So whenever you start scraping, you always start on a particular page, right? You then extract the data from it and you're done. But here's the thing. When you're scraping a website, you don't scrape just one page. You scrape the entire website. Imagine you're scraping an e-commerce website and you want to scrape all their products. You're not going to scrape just one product, are you? You're going to scrape the entire website. Now you can't sit down and write down every URL of that website and then, you know, scrape each one individually. This start URLs list over here contains each URL that you want to scrape, but you can't do that. You can't just write down a million URLs in this list. That's not feasible and you can't keep updating that either. So what exactly is our solution to scraping an entire website? Well, that's where link following comes into play. What you can do is, for example, start on the homepage for an uh, e-commerce website and then automatically follow the links from there. So you can basically, uh, you know, start on the homepage and then there are 10 products over there. You'll automatically go onto each, ten, each of those 10 pages and then those 10 pages, each of those 10 pages may have links that lead to other products and then so on and so forth. And this way, as long as the website is linked to, to, together internally, you'll be able to scrape the entire website. In our previous videos, we've been scraping this website with, which has quotes on it, but we've only been dealing with one page. Now this website has many pages with different quotes. Uh, I don't know how many it has. I think it has at least 10, 20 of these, but I don't, I'm not really going to go and write down each page number over there in my start URLs. Okay. That I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do instead is make my spider in such a way that it automatically finds every page and then scrapes it. Okay. So how do we do this? Well, what you need to do is import scrapey dot spiders dot crawl dot rule wait hold on i think it's in here rules is equal to rule okay no don't got it yet and from import rule all right got it okay so over here then we need, we need to import one more thing link extractor here from scrapey dot link extractors import link extractor okay now we're going to begin coding so we're going to come here and this variable should be called rules okay this is compulsory don't change the name and in here we're going to define a few rules okay that define the behavior of our scrapey spider so one thing that we need to do is follow is, e is equal to true all right now I'm going to over here uh, begin writing some code. So what we're gonna do is for quote in response.css uh, quote okay um, let's see div dot quote okay and if you're not familiar with what I've been doing in the previous videos, we've basically been experimenting with CSS selectors and expat selectors, how to acquire the quotes, how to acquire the quotes of a specific author, and so on. We'll just use CSS selectors right now. So we'll do uh, div dot quote, and then we'll do um, span dot text. Text is the uh, class over here. We have div dot quote to get this div then span.text to get this span, and then we'll do colon colon text to get the text, okay? And then over here, we'll do yield quote, and then quote dot get, get to get the text, all right? Now let's do scrapey crawl quote, quote is the name of my spider, then we'll do dash o output dot json, and now this should get all of the quotes from the first page. Wait, hold on. Uh, all right. Okay. So yeah, here we have all of the quotes from the first page. Now our goal is to make this spider in such a way that it can acquire the quotes from all pages. All right. 
Let me just delete this now. Okay, so how do we do this? Well, what we need to do here is create a link extractor object using the link extractor class. And this link extractor object has several parameters, well, optional parameters. The one that we're concerned with right now is allow. Allow tells it which ones it's supposed to follow. So what we want to do is go over here and then examine the next button over here. Okay, this is how we go to different pages, right? We can uh, go over here and do inspect. And over here we can see that the URL link over here is structured like slash page slash and then the page number. Okay, so what we're going to do is page slash. There's one more thing we need to do. We need to go over here and from scrapey.spiders import crawl spider. This is a special type of spider that has built in crawling logic. Uh, crawling, by crawling we mean that it can follow links and crawl through an entire website. That's a proper term, crawling, okay, if you've never heard of it before. So replace this, this is a very basic spider, okay, this scrapey.spider. We're gonna replace it with, with crawl spider, which has the additional logic. Crawl spider can make use of this rule, okay, spider.spider .spider cannot. I mean, we can implement that logic, we can do it. I'll show you how to do it in this video but I'm just showing you the easier way first, okay? Now, let's try this code again and let's see what happens. And it says it's not iterable. Let's see what's wrong. Okay, my bad, this was supposed to be a list, all right? Because uh, there can be multiple rules, okay? This is just one rule, there can be multiple rules in this list, all right? So let's run that code again. And it looks, yep, there's a lot of pages. We can see a lot of pages now that are being indexed over here. Sorry, crawled. And looks like 154 pages. Let's see. And no, nothing's here. Why? Hold on, let's see. It certainly crawled them. Crawled. Yep. Let me try removing that. I wonder if that was the reason. Previously I did it like this. Okay, now it's extracting, crawling all of these pages. And let's check the output. Still no output. All right, let's try one thing. Let's remove the link extractor or let's put in the callback. The callback is usually by default. It should be picked up as parse, but sometimes I think, maybe, I don't know, maybe it's not checking that for some reason. So let's do that. This is a string by the way. And I think that, yeah, there's no underscore. So let's try this again. And I think this is working now, all right. So apparently you'd need to explicitly mention the parse function. I don't know why. Yep, there we go. Oh my God, that's a lot. Okay, okay. That is, wow, 333 quotes, really? Uh, how do we check if there are any duplicates? Never mind. it looks like I got my question answered. That's quite a few duplicates, but we can't really verify why. Right. Why are they duplicates? Still, so that's a lot of quotes. Um, how many pages do you think there are over here? Well, we could just go here and change this. How many pages are there? There are 10 at least, I think. Okay, there are at least 10. And let's try 13. No. Okay, I don't think there are more than 10 pages. So there should only be 100 URLs. So why are we getting... 300 and you know 333 why let's try and fix this problem a quick way to figure this out i mean the only way to really figure this out or the best way just go here and start looking at the links that it was scraping our scraper now we can observe from here that it's scraping these pages look at this you see this over here there's a the duplication now I can see over here that it's scraping this tag. 
Okay. Now, even though I said allow is equal to page, but the problem is it would appear that the tags also have pages. The tags also have pages inside them. So that's why uh, this is happening. That's why this is happening. And okay, this is causing problems. So what we need to do is prevent this scraper, the spider, from scraping the pages with tags. Because put it this way, the normal pages have the quotes and the tags also have the quotes, just categorized differently. So either we scrape the tags or either we scrape the pages. We should do the pages because the pages have unique quotes. A, a quote could have two tags, so it's going to show up twice in two different tags, for example. So yeah, we're going to go with the pages. What we're going to do is use the deny parameter and stop it from uh, scraping anything with with this, okay? It's not going to scrape anything with tag, all right? So if we do this now, it's only going to scrape the pure pages. And woof, I need to delete this first. Okay. Let me just cancel that, delete this, and then run this again. Uh, otherwise, the output gets appended, not overwritten. I'm pretty sure that there's a way to disable that, though. Okay, so this is executing now. It should take a, shouldn't take that long. And done. Great. So how many do we have now? Exactly 100, uh, because we started. Whoops. We started from two and we go up to 101. So yeah, that's exactly 100. Great, now our code is working. See, we just implemented link following and look at this. It just took, what, five, six lines of code? That's it, that's the great thing about Scrapey. You barely need to define your own logic. Okay, now this is um, a very basic version. Uh, now what should we do here? Is there anything else that we can take a look at? There's cool stuff over here. Like, look, uh, allow domains, that's pretty obvious. Which domains to follow or not? Because this is actually a issue. It's a possible issue. Like you don't want to follow links to external websites. In that case, you're gonna put allowed domains. Uh, and actually we, we already have that over here. So it's not an issue, okay? I think you can, you can probably put it in here as well. So deny domains, again, which ones not to go on. And there are a few other stuff over here. Maybe we'll talk about some of them later. All right. So what else can we do? Let's see. Anything worth discussing? No, not right now. Right now, I want to show you something else. Let's talk about how to make our own custom link following code. And don't worry, that's not going to be very long either. It's going to be pretty simple. OK, uh, let's just um, remove this. Or wait, let's keep that in there. We're going to remove this because with the new technique that we're using, I don't think rules come to play or do they? Let me just comment that out. But one thing that we need to remove is scrapey dot spider. We need to put this back because we're using our own custom logic. We're not going to be using the logic provided by crawl spider. Okay. Now, again, you might be thinking that this is such a good solution. Why should we implement our own scraping logic for following links? Sometimes you need the extra control and you will appreciate it sometimes. And sometimes that what, I, what I'm about to teach you has multiple uses. So you will definitely find it useful. Okay, let's begin. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'll go here, then I'm gonna scroll down here and wait, we're on the 10th page. Let me go back to the first. Now here I'm gonna go and I'm gonna look at this. How do, how do I get this link? I want this link. We, we need to manually extract it now if we're doing this by ourselves. So I need to find this, this element. Okay, I'll go over here and response.css, then we'll do li.next, and I'm gonna take this a, and we need the href now. So how do we do that like this? HDR for attribute href. This gives us this link. All right. Now, what we want to do is follow this link. All right. Now, back here, we're going to basically say that this is the link to the next page. Next page. All right. And I don't think we're screwing anything up. This looks fine. 
Or actually, I don't think we need to do this. Yeah, I don't think so. What we're going to do is response. Uh, no, wait. Yield. Response. Dot follow. Or here, we'll do, um, which one came first? There's two parameters. One of them is the function and one of them is, yes, the uh, a, the a tag, the a element. All right. That's why I don't do anything like get over here. Don't do any of that. Don't find the HRF. Don't do that. Just, 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 you know, do this. All right. Now I think we're set. What we've basically done here is found the a tag, the, the hyperlink to the next page. And then we're following that. We're calling the follow method and we're passing in that a tag and then the function which we want to use to parse that page. We, we want to use the same page, sorry, the same function to parse it, to parse the next page. So we're just gonna pass in self.parse. Now let me delete this output.json file and let's run this again. And there's an error, okay. Selector list is not supported. All right, how do we solve this? Actually, I think I know, I know, I know the problem. All right, because this is this returns a list, I believe. So what we need to do here is for next page, in here, do this. I thought maybe we could avoid that, but I, I guess not. Okay, is this gonna work? Oh, look, things are being scraped. All right. And yes, item scraped count 100. Perfect. See? And honestly, I don't think you can, you can say that this was much more complicated than what we did over here. In fact, if anything, it's simpler, but it's just harder to customize a bit, at least uh, on a base level. Like um, over here, we used the allow and deny parameters to basically you know, to control which link we were following. Over here, we located the link ourselves. Now, again, this might come in handy. Okay, definitely it's a useful tool to have. And, you know, we're, we're just manually find, finding the link and manually filtering stuff and putting in our own if statements, our own conditions, our own validation. So sometimes this custom logic may be necessary because this may not be enough, okay? So that's the end of this video. Hope you guys learned something useful today and hope you guys found this useful. If you want to see more content like this in the future, make sure to subscribe to the channel, leave a like, leave a comment. In the next few videos, we're going to, we're going to begin talking about processing for, you know, processing, post-processing for our data. Then a few other interesting topics like how to avoid being detected while scraping, how to uh, mask your presence of your spider bot. Many, many interesting topics. Okay. Stay tuned.